Hi guys, I am here to film a demo for business computer applications. I'm going to be filming the chapter four um, assignment for Word. This covers like references, mainly references tab. So that's what we're going to be doing. I am going to share my screen and we will do it together. Um, I've glanced <laughs> at the instructions but this will be my uh, my first go through. So let's see how we do. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, I'm just gonna share the entire desktop so that, um, filming in Zoom, <laughs> so that we can see the instructions, which I have open here in my browser. I'm just gonna make that like that so I can see them. And I have the document downloaded and open. The document that we're looking at, chapter four, and it's retirement is the little extra bit there. Ooh, my thing here. So as you can see, um, a couple settings are turned on. Uh, let's review those quickly. So from the home tab, I have my non-printing characters turned on. I also have my ruler turned on from the view tab. Um, and in the uh, review tab, I have track changes all markup turned on. So I have this extra bit over here where comments will appear. We're going to be using the review tab and the references tab. So uh, let's get going. All right. Cool. <laughs> so first thing to do is download and open the document. We have done that. We've also put all markup on um, so that we can see our comments. So the first thing we're going to do now is review the comments. And on the second page, we're going to reject the replacement of the two words now to lowercase. Okay, so we're gonna review the comments. So we can see that there's been some formatting changes um, by Jennifer Hurley here. Um, and you can see this as well. So these two, we're gonna reject. So I'm just gonna click on this and I'm going to reject it with the button, okay? And it's put in my um, original now. <laughs> and you can see the thing I rejected in red right there. All right. I'm going to do the same thing here. I am going to reject that. Okay. All righty. Let's review if there's any other comments. Um, they're over here. <laughs> so this should be, uh, what does it say? Listed as heading two. It should be heading one. Please change it. Okay. Uh, insert a caption for the table in the next table change all headings formatted with heading three to heading two, make sure the whole table's on the same page. Um, okay, they've did some formatting. Please change the heading to as heading four to heading three. Okay, cool. So I can see all of the uh, steps. I assume we will address those. All right, we're going to accept all other tracked changes, and then we're going to turn off the tracking, but we're going to keep the comments. Sure. So I'm once again going to just scroll down. This time I'm going to accept everything. So I'm just going to click on all track changes and accept them. Okay, this one as well, accept. This one, accept. Okay, scroll down any other tracked changes. Here's a couple. I'm going to accept and I'm going to accept. All right. Oh, and here's another one. I'm going to accept this as well. Okay. And accept. Okay. So there should be nothing in the track changes anymore. Um, as you can see, they've all disappeared. <laughs> so excellent. It means I've got them all. You can then turn off your track changes so that it's not going to track the changes that we make to the document. All right. Um, number four, change all the headings to the correct heading styles as per the comments left by my imaginary partner. Okay, let's do it. So I'm going to scroll down to the first comment. This one is a heading two and it should be heading one. So we're gonna go back to the home tab because that's where my styles pane is. And I'm going to highlight the introduction and I'm gonna click on heading one, okay? 
Now I am going to go to the next one. This is about a caption. So I'm going to come back to that. This one says format all things that are heading three to heading two. So this is heading two right now. Okay. And I want to move that to heading, oh, or sorry, it's heading three right now. And I want it to be heading two. So I'm just going to do that. And I'm actually going to open up my navigation pane. Um, because I find this easier. I'm gonna pop onto outline there and then I can just jump to anything that's level three. So this is obviously a level three um, because of the way it's nestled here, right? So then I can go back to my home tab, um, click on this part and just click on heading two. Same for this one. This one wants to be a heading two. Oop, <laughs> doesn't wanna include comparisons apparently heading two, there we go. And the next one is down here, change that to a heading two. And this one as well um, is also a heading three. So that needs to be heading two, okay. Who can participate? This is not a heading three, that's heading four. So we're gonna change this to heading three. Okay. And then the conclusion is heading three. So we're gonna make it heading two, okay. And now, yeah, looks beautiful. Now we have level one and two and one level three. Okay. All right. Number five, replace the first or reply, sorry, to the first comment by typing, I have made the style replacement include the period. I'm going to just copy it um, because I, that's faster. <laughs> um, yep. And I'm just going to go to my first comment. So I'm going to scroll up to the first comment, which is right here. And we're going to paste that in. I'm going to remove that space that I accidentally copied and then press send. Done. Number six, select the table on page two and insert a caption text. OK, so I'm just going to copy again the blue text that they want me to put in. Um, make sure the caption is above the item and centered. Okay, so we want caption text above centered on table on page two. So that would be this one here. So I'm gonna just click onto the table, highlight the table, and then I'm actually just gonna right click on it. Um, and I'm going to choose insert caption. Okay. And then I'm going to paste in the information from the instructions. And I'm gonna make sure it is above my selected option and then uh, selected item, sorry. And then I'm gonna say, okay. And it's gonna pop up there. And then I'm just gonna center it, okay. All right, number seven, assign the caption table two. Okay, so this one, I'm again gonna copy the blue text that they want me to put in there, including that colon. And um, as instructed in comments and we're gonna center it. So let's have a look. We're gonna scroll down here to the next chart, which is this table here. I'm gonna just click on the little corner here to highlight it. Um, it says, make sure the whole table is on the same page. Okay, um, sure, <laughs> sure, let's do it. So first of all, I'm going to right click on the whole table. I'm gonna say insert caption, and I'm gonna just paste that in. Um, it didn't tell me above or below, so I'm just going to leave it as above because that is the default um, and just check that this all looks good. It does. So I'm going to say, OK. And there it is. And once again, I'm going to center that. Um, I'm not going to follow this instruction. Because I don't want uh, <laughs> I don't want to do something that it doesn't tell me to do yet. So let's uh, carry on. All right, number eight, select the APA sixth edition style. Sure. We're gonna click before the period at the end of the first sentence in the 403B plans section, um, ends in TSA plan and insert a web citation. Okay, let's do it. So I'm gonna first of all find where on earth I'm going, which is 403B plans. I'm gonna just use my handy dandy navigation pane over here to jump over to that. And I'm gonna find the sentence that ends in bracket TSA plan. 
Oh, it's right here. It's the first sentence. <laughs> um, and they want before the period. Good. Um, all right. So I've clicked before the period. Citations always go before your final punctuation. Footnotes and stuff can go after your punctuation. So a little difference there. If, of course, you were using a footnote citation style, like MHRA footnote or um, Harvard footnote, Chicago footnote, um, <laughs> you would defer to the footnote style. So for APA, um, it's always before the punctuation. So we are going to go to our references tab and we are going to select APA sixth edition. Now, APA is actually on its seventh edition now. So um, check with your instructor if you're using this for assignments to make sure that they're okay with you doing the sixth edition. Otherwise, you'll have to manually update them a little bit. Um, there's only minor changes between the two editions, but changes do uh, exist. So, uh, or differences, I should say, do exist between um, APA six and seven, hence them making a seven. Anyway, for Word, <laughs> we don't need to worry about that. Just keep that in mind for when you're doing research. So we've chosen ABA and now we're going to insert a citation and it's going to be a web citation. So I'm going to click on insert citation and I'm going to select from type of source. I'm going to say website. Okay. And it's giving me the fields for an APA um, citation of a website. So I'm just gonna move my stuff to the side here so I can see my blue text and I'm going to put in the info. So um, there's no author. <laughs> so we're going to uh, just highlight the name of the web page and put that in here. Okay. Then we will take the name of the website, which is the IRS apparently. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. I put that in the URL section for some reason. There we are. Um, and then we have a year, which is 2018. So I'm just going to copy that into the year section. Month is October. Okay. And the day is 08. So again, I'm just going to copy that in. Then they give us the URL at the bottom here and copy and paste that in. Okay, now I am going to say okay. And it is going to automatically insert that. So you can see right there, it has done so. Um, it looks awful. <laughs> okay, so the reason it looks like this, um, if you were doing a, um, if you, you were actually gonna be citing this, uh, normally you have the author's name, comma, year, but because there's no author, they've put the title, which is incredibly long. So that's why it looks so chonky. All right, we're going to do another one. This one is at the ending the first sentence of the 401k section. So 401k uh, ends in their workplace. So that's right here. I'm going to put it before the period. And then I'm going to enter another web citation. So I'm just going to click on insert citation. And it's already set to web because that's what I just did. And now I'm going to copy this information into the field. So the name of the web page is 401k plan. Oopsie. And I'm assuming these don't have um, authors because they're government sources. So government sources, it's by the government. So um, they usually don't have authors uh, listed. Typically, I would put... Um, the government as a corporate author, but um, they're not asking us to do that for the purposes of this edit. So um, I'm just a stickler about citations. All right, name of website, again, that's IRS, okay. Year is 2018. Okay, so let's get here. Month is October. and day is 14. Now you'll note there's more fields here than was showing in that in-text citation. Um, and that's because the full citation that has all this information will go at the end on a citations page or references page or bibliography, whatever you wanna call it. All right, so I've copied in all of that information. I'm just gonna say, okay. And it's gonna automatically insert it for me. You can see it right there, 401k plan, comma, 2018. So title, comma, year of publication, um, again, because there's no author. All right, 
Um, now we're going up to the first table. So that's this one, okay? And we are going to replace the source URL. So this one here, so I'm just take that. And we're gonna replace that with a citation. So I'm just gonna delete it. And then I'm gonna press insert citation. Again, it is a website and I'm gonna just copy in all that information. So future value of money is the name of the web page. Name of the website is the IRS. Okay. And that would be equivalent to like, you know, the article in the newspaper or whatever, right? The small part, the large part. Okay, year, October 14. Okay, and then here is our URL. I'm just gonna copy, oops, I do not want that extra space. They're real sticklers. So make sure you don't have any blank uh, extra space there. All right, and then I'm gonna say, okay. And there it is, beautiful. So you can see it's hyperlinked, it's blue, um, but it looks like a nice, tidy um, APA citation. All right, so now I am going to move along to step 11. We're gonna insert a footnote on page two at the end of the T, my brain just like <laughs> short circuited. Hold on. Okay. Insert a footnote on page two at the end of the table heading, table heading. Okay. One thing in the introduction section, which ends with 6% annual return. There's a lot of prep phrases in there. Let me uh, just, we'll just start, I guess. So we want to be on page two, which I believe we are. I'm just going to double click in the footer section. It's faster, but of course you could get into this um, from the ribbon as well. So I'm in the footer now and I am going to, uh, <laughs> hold on, at the end of 6% return, where's that in my text? Oh, it's a footnote, not a footer. That's the problem. I was really confusing myself there. Okay, I'm leaving the footer, goodbye. Just gonna click back into the regular document. Footnote, footnote. All right, that's totally different. Let's do that. So once again, I'm just gonna copy the text that they want us to have. Um, do not include the period there. And I am going to find this sentence. So this is page two table heading. So that would be here, assuming 6% annual return. And we are going to click on annual return right there at the end. Okay. And then I'm going to go to my references and I'm going to say insert footnote. And you can see it's put a little superscript number there for me, which matches the number at the bottom. I'm just going to paste in the text, uh, delete the extra space. And actually what I'm going to do is do that again so that I can show you. So paste it in and then you can see the clipboard here. Um, I'm just gonna click on that and say, keep text only. And that's gonna get rid of my problem there. Okay, and now we just wanna choose the number format for our footnotes. So I'm just going to scroll this over here so I can see what I'm doing. And I am going to go into next footnote. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna go into um, show notes. Is that what I'm doing? <laughs> Sometimes my brain just says no more. Okay, so I'm going to change my footnote style. There it is, footnote. And here it is, number format. And I'm just gonna click to ABC and I'm gonna say apply. And that has changed now to a lowercase a instead of a one. All right, number 12, insert a blank page at the end of the report and insert a bibliography with the title of references. Sure, but a bibliography, <laughs> bibliography should be double spaced, no paragraph spacing before or after. That's some spacing after my own heart. All right, let's do it. So we're gonna go to the end of the report, way down the bottom. You could have done this by pressing control end if you felt like it. Um, and now that I'm at the bottom, I'm gonna put in a blank page. So I'm gonna do uh, control enter page break or command enter if you're on a Mac like me. Um, and now I'm just going to go here and I'm gonna say um, insert bibliography. So this button right there, bibliography. And I click on it 
It's going to have some options. I don't have one that's called um, references. So I guess I will change that myself. Um, here it is. So I'm just going to click into bibliography and I'm going to write references. Sure. Um, okay. It should be double spaced and no paragraph spacing before or after. So again, I'm just going to highlight this and I'm going to um, just do this from the ribbon. So double spaced, okay. And I'm just gonna hop into line spacing and make sure there's no before or after spacing. Okay, so zero and zero and click and there we go. All right, so now that is uh, double spaced. That's an extra one down there, which I don't think it requires, but. Oops. Okay, sure. All right. Um, format the bibliography with a font of Times New Roman and size 12, classic. Center the title. All text in the bibliography should be black text one. No text should be bold. Okay, so I'm going to highlight it all. I'm going to select my color. Right now it's on automatic, which is black, but they'll mark it wrong. So black text one is just going to be the black one at the top there. And then they wanted to have Times New Roman. So again, I'm just gonna double check that that's what we've got, Times New Roman. And they do not want anything to be bold. So I'm gonna unbold it all. Um, no bold, okay. Um, and, oh, size 12 for the body. I'm assuming the title does not wanna be size 12. That's my assumption, but I could be wrong. I really don't know. Um, no, this is supposed to be heading one. So I'm going to put that back to heading one. All right. Bibliography, blah, 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 blah. Double space. Center the title. Sure, sure. Okay. It's command E on the keyboard. Um, black text one. We already did that. There's no bold text except for the title. And I'm going to leave that there because they haven't told me to change the header. Create a table of contents now on a new page position between the cover and current. We are going to use classic style because I am on Mac. So just scroll, scroll up here. We've got our cover page. We need to put in a new page in between. So I'm going to just click to excuse you. I guess that it's doing that because there's like a picture in the background there. So I'm actually just gonna do it from here, I guess. Um, so I'm clicking in front of introduction, pressing command enter or control enter, um, and then just coming up to the top of the page break. Um, I really would prefer that page break to be on this page though. So I'm gonna click in front of the page break, press up. Is that gonna work for me? Backspace? No, it's not because then it deleted my extra page. So I'm just gonna put that extra page back in. Oops, <laughs> not like that, <laughs> like that. All right, so there's my page break. It's just where it was before, so that's fine. So I'm gonna click after the page break so that we're on this new page and we're going to go back to references and we are going to do a uh, table of contents. So that's over here. And I'm going to choose classic because I'm on a Mac and that's what it told me to do. And there it is, beauty, beauty, beauty. Okay, really hate how that uh, got rid of my <laughs> page break between the two of those. So I'm just gonna put one back um, like that. That's better. All right, so that looks great. And you can see it matches the outline I have over here. That's how they do it. Um, it just pulls up that information that you've created in styles. All right. Um, number 15, mark the following words as index entries. Let's do it. Okay, um, so we're gonna find uh, these words and we're gonna mark them up as index entries. So the first one we are looking for is contribution. So I'm gonna find this from the body text here and I'm going to actually, you know, I'm gonna be, be real lazy about it. I'm gonna put contribution in the finder button up here. You can also get to this by doing control or command F. Um, it should take you to the finder window. And we've got contributions, beautiful. Um, and we're gonna mark it as an entry. So um, I'm going to mark entry, okay, contribution. And it is, uh, what else do I want? Anything else? <laughs> no. 
Is that it? Yep, that's it. Okay. So I'm going to say mark all. Hmm? No index entries were marked because it all says contributions and not contribution, I suppose. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should get rid of the capital C just to mess around. Mark all. All right. Well, I guess we'll carry on. Let's do the next one. So next entry would be Roth IRA. Okay. And this is a cross-reference. No, I don't need to do that yet. So just stay current page. And yeah, that's it. Okay, so Roth IRA, mark all. Didn't mark any, love that for me. Um, and then we have, what else? Uh, traditional. IRA, mark all. No entries were marked. Okay, let's, let's try this again. So I've got contributions highlighted. Good. Maybe I need to insert my index first. <laughs> Does it tell me to insert my index? Add an index on the blank page at the end of the document. I'm going to do that first and just see if that makes my system happier with me. So I'm going to scroll down to the end of the document. This is before citations or after citations. Uh, very end. So all the way at the bottom. Okay. So we're going to then press control enter again to get to the next blank page and I'm going to insert this index. So insert index. Okay. And I'm just choosing the classic setting and I'm saying okay to that. Um, all right. Now I'm going to go and mark these index entries and hopefully they will be happier with me. So we want the first indication, uh, first instance rather of contribution. So I'm just going to click on contribution again. I'm going to get right here. I'm going to highlight the word contribution and I'm going to insert mark an entry, contribution, good, um, current page, and I'm going to say mark all. Okay. Now that worked for me. <laughs> Much better. Okay, now I'm going to do the next item. So the next one on the list is uh, Roth, whatever, Roth IRA. Okay. So again, I'm going to say Roth IRA, and I'm just going to say mark all. I didn't like it. So it wants me to go back and do it manually. Okay, sure. So I will go back and I will search for it in my search, Roth uh, IRA. So is this the first instance of it. So let's see. Uh, yeah, we'll just do it from here. So I'm going to just highlight Roth IRA here and I'm going to say um, mark entry, mark uh, whatever, mark entry. And then I'm going to say mark all. And there we go. Okay, now I'm going to close it. Now, next one, traditional IRA, let's do it. So I'm going to, once again, find the traditional IRA, which seems to be up here. Traditional IRA right here, traditional IRA. And I'm going to mark my entry. Mark my entry. And I'm going to say mark all and close. All right. Next one, 403B. So I am going to find that using Finder. So 403B. Okay. And here's our first instance. So I'm just going to highlight it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to click mark entry and I am going to mark all. All right. And I'm going to close it. And I am going to find the last one, which is the 401k. Um, so locate that 401 brackets k and bracket um and it's right here so i'm just going to is that the first instance no they're up here so i'm going to click on uh the first instance just highlight any of these and say mark entry and once again i'm going to say mark all and then i'm going to close it all right a fiddly process but there we are Okay, um, 
had an index, we already did that to make my uh, index entries work better. So if we go down to look at the index now, so scroll, 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 here it is. It says no index entries found. What we're gonna do is gonna right click on it and update the field and it's gonna fill it in with my entries. Beautiful, <laughs> gorgeous, love it. All right, um, we're gonna insert a footer, not a footnote with a centered page number, plain number two format. I just use the default because I'm on a Mac. Um, don't put it on the first page and begin it with page one on table of contents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, sure. So we are going to just click into the footer. I'm just double clicking into the area, but again, you could get into this from the ribbon. And I am going to uh, put a centered page number. I'd already forgotten. <laughs> so I'm just going to center it first. And then I'm going to include page number, click page number. I'm going to click center and uh, do not show number on first page, leave that plain, I'm gonna say okie dokie. And then what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go into page number, format page numbers, and I am going to say start at page two. Yes, does that make sense? <laughs> confused myself. I'm going to say yes. And then I'm going to go here and it says page two. Why do I have an extra page here? Honestly. Okay. Hold on. Let me get rid of this extra page first of all, because that's whack. I don't know what's up with that. And then let's see how we're doing. So it starts at page two. We actually want it to start at page one. So I'm just going to click back into it. Um, and I'm going to go back into page number and format my page numbers. And um, let's see, page numbering continue. I want to start at one on page two. Is that going to work? Yeah, there we go. Start at one on page two. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to close my header and footer now. Um, I'm going to put an page breaks with the second table and the captions on one page. Okay, so it's time to actually uh, address this note here. So page break would be here. Okay. And then uh, what else does it ask me for? Um, update the table of contents to reflect the change in page numbers. Okie dokie, so I'm gonna scroll down to table of contents, or sorry, scroll up to table of contents at the beginning. And I'm going to click on table of contents, oops click on table of contents and right click it and say update field. And it is going to uh, update page numbers. Okay. There we go. Okay, and that's it. So I maybe have some extra enters like spaces here or there. I hope I don't, I hope it's uh, the way it wants it. <laughs> Oh, I forgot something. You know what I forgot to do? Let's go back up here. I forgot to do the deduction um, cross-reference. So that one is where? Here we are. So we're going to find the first occurrence of deduction, okay, and put a cross-reference. So I'm just going to pop that into my search deduction. Um, and we're going to scroll up, make sure it's the first instance. It is excellent. So I'm going to highlight it. Oops, gonna highlight it. And then I'm gonna go back to my references. I'm going to mark my entry and I'm going to put a cross reference and I'm gonna say C. And is there any uh, punctuation? No. So then I'm just gonna type in cross reference contributions or contribution singular. Okay, and now I'm going to say uh, mark. There we go. And that seems to be done. So I'm going to say close. Cool. All right. Sure. <laughs> I don't think I've forgotten anything else. So let's save it and see if I have forgotten anything else. So I'm going to save as I always want to save my finished file with an 
different name um, just so that I can tell what I'm doing. And it also means that if I do need to go back and change things, I can keep track of how many times I've done it, which version I'm looking at, whether it's the blank one, all that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the word complete at the end. That's just my method so that I can easily search the word complete and get all my demo files. So I'm just going to save that. And then I'm going to hop back over onto Pearson and we're going to upload it and see what happens. So um, I'll make this wide again so that it looks normal. I'm going to choose my file. Give it a second to think about the choice, <laughs> the choices it must make. Okay. And it's going to be this one here because I can see the word complete there. And I'm going to open it. And then I'm going to double check the name of the file. Yeah, it says complete. So I'm going to click upload. And then once that's uploaded and ready, I'm going to submit for grading. Then I'm going to close my assignment and I'm going to see what happens. So this is like a extra weird account I have where I like upload people's assignments to check them. So you'll see some other attempts in there um, for some of the activities. But let's see how we have done today on chapter four. So you can see my uh, student practice activities there. I'm just going to open up the thing to refresh it. Oop. Apparently, no, I'm not. <laughs> it's not what I wanted. I want to click the three dots here and say view submissions and have a look at my submission. Mm -hmm. It's thinking. I've confused it. I've overwhelmed the system. <laughs> Take a little break, I guess. Just have a rest while it's loading. Have a nap, get a snack, get some coffee. 